Hi, it's Jack Joseph Quig. I uh, woke up this morning, believe it or not, with this crazy tone in my voice. Um, I don't know how it happened exactly, so I apologize for uh, this not great sounding voice. Uh, the good thing is, you could actually maybe use some waste plugins to try to fix it. I'm really, really excited about the Abbey Road collection, the ADT the automatic double tracking, the spreader on the TG12345 is incredible. It has totally changed how I make records. Being able to take the automatic double tracking and even have two or three different presets and adding them all together has been able to me to get sound on voices I've never been able to get before. Incredible. I suggest that you check the NV2. The low level fader on the NV2 is remarkable. If they take away MV2, I quit. Cause it, I'm done. No more records. The MV2, when you push up that low level fader, especially on the voice, and you get it just right, you start to hear all the low level stuff that the high level stuff, meaning all the music covers. You know when someone's singing in front of you, Goose guitar or at a piano, or the track's not rolling, and you're hearing all the real character in their voice, the real attitude in their voice. But then, when they have to compete with all the instruments, you lose a lot of that. Envy 2, when you push to low level, it takes all that low level stuff, the crack the low register of the voice. Send the little new ounces, the, the breaths, all the things that are expressive. You have to have, like in a voice, a low level does that. Put it on a voice, put it in the track, start pushing it, and, and decide how to use it by listening for the emotion in the voice, the character, the attitude. That's what that plugin does. Nothing is better than that. The plugin for that is incredible. That combined with the Pug Child, the Pug Child will give you that beautiful tone, that everything that we like about harmonic distortion, everything we like about tubes, everything we like about warmth, the Pug Child has. Then she hands it to the MV2, and the MV2 brings up. And also what you do with the MV2, when you put it after the Puig Child, is it pulls up a lot of that low stuff. Some of the hum, some of the distortion, some of the hiss, some of the things we like about <clears throat> and a lot of gear comes more to the forefront when you push that after a great modeled analog piece. That's another thing that's great about the, uh, <clears throat> About the NV2, one plug I'd like to really suggest that you spend some time with um, is a vitamin. Vitamin is not an equalizer. Vitamin is not a compressor. Vitamin is the beginning, and we'll see much more of this, of a harmonic generator that you're able to look at the harmonics over multiple bands. In the digital domain, and in digital amplification, there is no harmonic distortion. Class A amplification is where you have most of that harmonic distortion. The old original Neve consoles, way, way, way back, the original ones, pre-8078, the real original ones, there were some Class A, there weren't a lot of them, have a lot of harmonic distortion. You know, in some ways, Harmonic distortion is like glue because it takes the frequency and it adds all these harmonics. It kind of makes the frequency fat and they kind of glue. I really suggest that you open up the vitamin, hear how it can take instruments and put them in another position. What we love about the 70s records is the three points of sound. The 80 records feel, and up, feel very one plane. 
because everything is loud. In order for something to be loud, something has to be soft, for something to be black, something has to be white, for something to be on the left, something has to be on the right, for something to be high, something has to be low, for something to be sweet, something has to be sour. Can't have all sweet, can't have all sour, not all black. The harmonic generator allows you to take instruments and color them in a way where you start to create multiple dimensions of the sound. Three points, four points, five points. And that's what gives, in a sense, a surround feeling or a depth feeling out of two points, out of two speakers. Think of it that way. Think of, of it as beautiful makeup. Don't think of it as an equalizer. Think of it as, as something that adds <clears throat> a tone or a quality that's not even quantifiable. You can't even express it. You just know that, why does that sound more interesting, more beautiful? And why am I allowed to put it in a different place in the pan sphere, I'll call it, that it sticks out differently now from the other instruments? It's a real serious tool that you should play with. Don't ignore it. Try it.